All right, we're ready to start configuring an API manager. And just to review why we need to do this is that we're going to have a variety of services, not just the fire server that we're trying to manage, but also monitoring and logging services that we're going to need with that service. Additionally, we want to uh, have the ability to secure it, and we're going to use Kong as a gateway to do that. Needless to say, we have to orchestrate many different uh, server services, and the best way to do that is with Docker. Now, I don't have the time to spend a lot of uh, cycles talking about Docker. It's a very good uh, way in which you can manage a lot of different services you configure them through what is called a Docker Compose file, what you're seeing here. And this specifies a lot of configuration parameters, including the ports. Uh, if you have a database, it can configure that. Uh, we're going to configure a GUI environment to use with Kong uh, to control it. And we could have a local fire service and then these monitoring services. Needless to say, this can be fairly daunting and complex. That's why I'm going to recommend to you that you consider using our service, what's already pre-configured. We have this up on Git and GitHub, and you can uh, basically download this for free and use the fire server in conjunction with API management that is already pre-configured out of the box. But obviously you could use uh, any number of API managers and that's really, I'm not trying to promote just this one. Uh, let's see what we need to do to configure a, uh, an API manager. Well, the first step is that we're going to need to bring up a terminal window and launch all those containers. And this is where that Docker Compose uh, file uh, comes in. We could basically bring up all the containers with a single command, Docker Compose up, and you'll see that we'll be creating a new network for those containers to communicate with each other, and it takes very little time, and all of these containers will be um, uh, launched and working. Now to validate that, we could just simply issue another Docker command called Docker uh, PS, and you'll see these uh, containers have all been launched and are running. So, so far so good. The next step is that we want to communicate with Kong to configure it and do those basic tasks that I mentioned uh, at the beginning of my talk. So we need a new window for this. Uh, we're going to basically go to the Kong admin portal called Konga, and that's working on port 1337. The first thing we need to do is log in. As you can see, mine is already pre-configured. We'll sign in. And now it's going to ask us for a uh, setup connection. And we can name this anything we want. I'm going to call it uh, Fire Kong for now. And we need to know what is the address of the Kong service. Where is that running? Well, in this uh, demo, it's running in a container at this IP address. And the Kong container always uh, is running at port 8001. So we'll create that connection and it looks like it's connected successfully. We could, uh, again, look at that in the connections uh, thing. It's, uh, we could deactivate this, but for now, we're going to go directly to creating a service. So as we mentioned earlier in the beginning, there are three major uh, uh, concepts for any API manager. There's a concept of a service. There's a concept of routes and a concept of consumers. The services are the things you want to manage. In our case, it's our fire server. 
So let's take a look at where that service lives. Uh, that is going to be on AWS. And we'll just launch Postman. And we'll see if we could communicate with that server. Now notice that is a very long URL string. We're going to just go ahead and get the metadata for that server. So we'll send a request. And you could see the server is up and running on AWS. It's an R4 uh, server. And we can get all the capability information. Now, that's great. Uh, what we'd like to do is now, instead of using uh, this, uh, this is our endpoint, essentially. We, we'd like to get that endpoint. And I'm having a little trouble copying it here, but OK, we'll copy this endpoint. And that's the service we want Kong to manage. So we're going to just go ahead and add it. And we'll just call this um, uh, fire service. Description, we don't have to have this, but we could just call this an R4 fire server. And now we need that URL string. That's going to tell Kong where, where it can find uh, this service. So we'll just go paste that in. We won't need to fill out the protocol host port because all of that can be parsed from that string. So we'll, oh, and we have a schema violation. Uh, uh, invalid value, just correct that. And we have a, a fire service. Let's just take a look quickly. You could see uh, that it did parse the URL screen, uh, uh, string so it knows what protocol to communicate with that service, the host, the port, etc., and the path on it. Great, so we're continuing uh, to do configuration. And now, once we have a service, we could add routes to it. And we could add as many routes as we want. These will just be paths to this service that Kong will uh, forward request coming through that route. And so let's, let's make this a little more concrete. I'll call this the main route. And uh, I'm going to just list the path to this route, a very simple R4 path instead of that big long URL string. And I'll go ahead and submit that path. And I'll submit this route. And you can see Kong took this as our main route. And so that's great. Now we're ready to uh, be able to test that and see if we can call our fire service using the Kong portal. So we'll go back to Postman. And now we would like to do a server request. And I'm just going to use the path that we've just added to the service. So let's try that again. And you see we're still getting, uh, we're getting uh, a return from the service. Nothing has been secured yet. And that's why uh, we're going to come to the next uh, major concept. We're going to come to the concept of consumers and how they tie into security. So stay tuned.